Hello and welcome. If this is your first time visiting my channel, then I have to tell you I have a huge stack of unopened art subscription boxes and I'm slowly trying to work my way through them and I share that with you here on this channel. So today we are opening a box from December of 18. It's old and yes, this is a video in 2020, but there's good stuff in here. So stay tuned and see what's inside. All right, let's see what's inside this very old subscription box. <laughs> Here we go. Looks like an anchor book. All right, we'll look at it later. Ah, okay. So you can tell this is back when Smart Art Box, I don't know, you would open the boxes and you'd be like, really? I paid $50 for this? And they really stepped up their game like the middle of 2019 suddenly their boxes were just chock full of supplies. So I think they were listening to their customers and the thing that people didn't really take into consideration is that they always came with a full art lesson. So you had the description of the supplies, some history and an entire art lesson. And so there was definitely time, effort and energy put into that. And if you actually add up the products, they're pretty close to the $50 you would spend. I actually spend, I think, $45 on this box in definitely back in 18 and the first half of 19, it was more in that $45 range. But like I said, if you want to go subscribe now, Smart Art Box definitely stepped up their game and what you have inside is definitely way worth your money. So looking at these supplies here, you probably understand what I mean because it just doesn't look like a whole lot. I do happen to know that these are very expensive. I bought a set of 12 for my oldest son and they were quite expensive. It seemed like maybe $26 for 12. So these were probably worth 12, $15. I wonder if they say in here, nope, in the new boxes, they put the prices of the supplies. And so we have brush pens, graphite pencils. And that's another thing that's like, who, who really needs more pencils? So I always don't like it when I get more pencils. Pit Artist Pen in size fine. I love these. These are awesome. So now I have like three of these and that does not make me sad at all. Dust Free Eraser. This is a green one. So it's not really dust free. It just has less dust. And then a little 90 pound sketchbook here, which is really nice. It's cold press on one side, hot press on the other. And they want you in this lesson to do a little flip book. So the idea is to take your book and draw something on each page and flip through it. But this is really nice paper. I'm not gonna waste it on a little drawing in the corner for a flip book. So I'm gonna be doing something different with it. I'm not even gonna open these. These are really nice Faber-Castell in a closed little tin that is sealed in plastic. I don't need any of these sizes because I have duplicates of them already. Granted, maybe they're not Pepper Castell. This is going directly into my giveaway bin. So when I have a giveaway on my channel, someone will get this. I tested out all the markers and this is what they look like. They match their caps pretty well, almost perfectly. For example, so yeah. Do not disappoint, as usual. I'm starting out here just getting a feel for the products again. I haven't used them on this particular paper, so I'm just doing a simple doodle sketch, basically, and seeing how they work with water, which they don't. They're pigmented India ink, so water is not really a thing, but you can kind of blend them with each other, which is kind of cool. So these are extremely light, fast markers, which is really nice. They're waterproof, they're permanent, they're odorless, acid-free, pH neutral, and available in 60 colors. Here, I mix the green with the red to get a nice dark green. And this is what I was saying about the markers blending really well with each other, because the red goes down and it looks really bright, but the moment you put the green on it, it just looks like a dark green. So it's really neat the way they work. I love them. I've used this on lettering paper here on this channel. I'll link that video up here in the corner for you if you wanna check it out later. And they're really nice on that other paper. This paper, it wasn't so great. Uh, it's watercolor paper is what the description kind of said. And anytime I got two layers of marker on it, it kind of peeled up the paper. 
So at first it feels like you're ruining your marker, but you're not. The marker tips are fine, but your paper is coming off on the marker tip. So that's a little unfortunate. And this is how I thought it was when I was done, but when I set it back down, I'm like, I want to use the black liner. So I picked it back up and just threw in a little bit of the black liner because I didn't plan on using it in my next little project, but I wanted to use it in this one just a little bit to show you guys that, yeah, it, it works. It's a typical fine liner and this brand happens to be one I really like, but when you erase this liner, like if you erase your pencil line under it, it will fade a little, so be careful with that. Maybe don't do it on something that you're going to have to erase a lot of. It loses some of its blackness is all. But they are still one of my absolute favorite liners and you can watercolor over them with no problem at all. For this next little project, I decided to take on something a little bit more complicated. I noticed that I had two yellows and so I found a reference photo of a bunch of yellow apples and decided to go with that. And you can see that I used the green in there for the dark colors and then I put red in over it later. And sometimes I just use the green with the yellow over it. So I get darks in various ways there by doing that. I just repeat apple after apple after apple. So basically I fill in the whole thing with the light yellow and then use the dark yellow to do some of the shadows and I pull the green in there to make the really deep shadows that are in all the cracks and crevices and stuff. And I have tried every different form of color correction on this video here. The green in the cracks and crevices is not that bright and I just cannot get it right here. It actually is showing up on my actual sketch paper as more of a greeny brown and it actually looks like a shadow not like I've stuck green in where they're supposed to be brown so I don't know I'll try and get a maybe a color corrected picture maybe a photograph at the end with a different camera or something if I remember by then <laughs> so we'll see how that goes but yeah it's not quite the color you see on the screen which is a bummer but all right here is about where I go real time to show you how I do that stem did you see the cat there? That was funny. Anyway, how I do the stem of the apple by taking the green, making that darker area, red over it to really darken it, and immediately while that is still wet, take the green back over to blend it. And then the yellow, this is the dark yellow, I pull out those shadows because the ink, since it has two layers there, is still very wet, so I can really pull that out with that other yellow and just not showing this on video. It's just not doing it justice. This actually looks really cool in person. I don't know really what's up with that monstrously huge apple on the left side, but we won't talk about that, right? I actually think it needs one more shadow and probably will add it, but there you can see this camera's version of my little sketch of apples. Remember how I said that I used these Pit Artist pens in a different project and I have that linked in the iCard already above. So I pulled them out to see if there were any duplicate colors because I just wanted to know. So the two that looked very similar to me were the yellow and the red. So I pulled them out and looked at them side by side and yes, these yellows, this is the dark yellow of the set I just received. They are exactly the same. So now I have two of those, but I did use a lot of them in this project and a lot of the yellow in the other project, and these reds were not the same. So I only have one duplicate in the entire set of 12 now that I have. So I guess I have a set of 11 and a duplicate, and so not too bad. All right, here's a quick rundown of what we did. Little samples and our two little mini projects. I have no idea what I'll use the rest of the sketchbook for, probably not markers since it fills up so much, but i am maybe try little watercolors on it. It's only 90 pounds, but it could be fun. If you've enjoyed this video and you like the other content on my channel, please consider subscribing. It would definitely make my day. If you like this video, give it a like down below. That also helps me out. I release videos every Tuesday and Friday, so I will see you in the next video. Have a great day. So I bought a set of 12 I have a cat playing with a plastic bag. Anyway, I bought a set of... T hey you. I'm filming when it's dark. The lighting is a little weird. I have a huge box. No, no, no. Hello and welcome. It's... Mm.